Hello, my name is Echo Rantanen. I'm the technical manager for the US and Canada, and this is an overview video about the new CCNA routing and switching 6.0 bridging course. Before going into the specifics of the bridging course, I want to set the foundation about some of the material that we're going to talk about. First of all, one thing you'll notice throughout this video, as well as the course, is we're using some acronyms. You may or may not be familiar with these. So the first acronym you'll see throughout the course is ITN. So this is the Introduction to Networks, which is basically the first CCNA course. Second acronym is RSE, which is, stands for the Routing and Switching Essentials, the second CCNA course. SCAN is for Scaling Networks, the third CCNA course. And the last one is CN for Connecting Networks, or the fourth CCNA course. So you'll see these acronyms um, throughout the slides. You also see them within the bridging course. The other thing that I wanted to cover is the organization of the areas within the course. It's important because as we go through this, you'll see me refer to numbers such as maybe 2.1.1.1. And I want to make sure that everybody understands what the breakdown is of that numbering scheme. So here on the left, you'll see that we have basically chapters. Chapters then are broken down into sections. From sections, we break things down into topics. And then really the content is built in pages. So that's the fourth component here on the right. So as you see something is brought in as a new topic uh, or a new page or a new section, then this will help you understand what we're talking about a little bit better. Next, let's talk about the resources that are available with this new bridging course. So first of all, we have this video, and then we also have another video that's posted that I would watch after this that talks about how to import the CCNA routing and switching 6.0 bridging course content into your existing CCNA routing and switching 5.x course. We also have instructor planning guides, we have activities, best practices, information on assessment, and because of the unique nature of a bridging course, we have two other areas that are called recommended new content placement that is highlighted in the import video, as well as content with reduced emphasis. We have instructor PowerPoints, which I know are very important to many of you within the classroom. And then we have the normal files that we have associated with our current curriculum, things like instructor and student lab, files as well as packet tracer files. Let's look at some of the specifics of the bridging course. First of all, the technical content and quizzes are within the course, so you don't click on an external GUI and you don't need to go to the assessment server to basically activate the quizzes. The content order is based on the order of the CCNA 6.0 courses. So an example would be if you looked at the fourth module, which is connecting networks in the bridging course, you'll see IPv6 ACL troubleshooting. Well, currently, routing and switching essentials has the ACLs in the second course, so the order might be a little different than what you're used to. Uh, no new equipment is needed to teach the bridge, so the current equipment that you have that's on the CCNA routing and switching equipment list will work fine in the bridge and moving forward with the 6.0 curriculum. There's no new instructor training required. I would recommend that you look at some of the instructor professional development activities that the technical field engagement team has put together to help prepare you for teaching the new content. And the quiz default nature within the course is all quizzes are published. So before you publish the course for students, you may wish to go in there and uh, click to unpublish some of the quizzes and also currently the quiz grades do not show up in the course gradebook. You can also change that nature as well. Let's take a look at the new content. So the bridging course is broken down to four modules and each module represents one of the current CCNA routing and switching 5.x courses. So the least amount of new content has been added into the introduction to networks course, information on extended trace route, debugging, and additional network troubleshooting. You'll see additional network troubleshooting throughout all of the modules. For routing and switching essentials, you'll see information added around host routes, CDP and LLDP for device discovery, a little more in-depth on NTP, and information on password recovery. For the scaling networks course, we have VTP, extended VLANs, and DTP. 
We already talked about, you know, multi-VLANs, but we're adding additional troubleshooting. Information around switch stacking. HSRP is already covered in the current curriculum, but now we're going to look at implementing it and potentially troubleshooting it. Again, we have multi-area OSPF in the course, but we're also looking at adding troubleshooting. For the connecting networks, uh, we're looking at, you know, WAN topologies, some DM VPN, implementing PPPoE. So we talk about PPPoE, but it's more of an overview. Now we're going to look at implementing it. Uh, additional content, basically a new topic here for eBGP. Some common IPv6 ACL errors, so again, more troubleshooting. Some LAN security best practices, SNM PV3 configuration, SPAN, quality of service, cloud and virtualization, and network programming. Let's look at four possible implementations of the bridging course content. So the first one is probably the most simple, where you would continue to teach the one, two, three, and four courses within the 5.x curriculum. You could then create a new bridging course and teach modules one through four. The second option, if you're more interested in focusing on the ICND1, CSENT, and ICND2, is maybe you'd want to break it in half. So you could teach the ITN and the RSC courses, then you could create a bridge course, enroll your students, and teach modules one and two, finish with the third and the fourth course, and then finish with the bridging modules three and four. Another option might be taking each of the modules, so remember there's one module for each of the current courses, and implement that at the end of the course. So take the introduction to networks, uh, import the content, and include the bridging module one at the end of the course. Uh, this is covered in the import video. The other option that we talk about in the import video is taking the ITN course, but integrating the new curriculum into the existing curriculum. So not just teaching it at the end of the course, but maybe you're interested in integrating it into the course. Something that's very important if you're looking at this model is to look at the instructor planning guides and the information about potential or recommended new content placement. How you decide to implement the content is completely up to you. We've just provided the tools for you to teach the new content. I want to also take a look at what I talked about, the instructor planning guide and instructor PowerPoints. So this is the instructor planning guide for the second module, which is around the routing and switching essentials new content. It's really broken into two different components. So the first part is the instructor planning guide. The second part of this is the class presentation material or what we call the instructor PowerPoints. So within the planning guide, there's a list of activities. So you'll notice we have syntax checkers, packet tracer activities, different interactive activities. We also have the information about the best practices in using the course. Information around assessments. Again, here it says that quizzes are published and you may choose to unpublish them. This is the slide I talked about, about recommended new content placement. So here's an example for routing and switching essentials 5.x. In chapter six, it talks about static routing. So the content for the bridge 2.1 is called configure static and default routes and really introduces more around host routes. This fits best with the chapter six. The other new content really doesn't have similar um, content in the 5.x course, so it probably makes the most sense to put those at the end. So this is just a recommendation. Also, there's content with reduced emphasis. Now, a note to say here is if you decide to spend less time on this content, remember that the assessments, including chapter assessments, final assessments, as well as the packet tracer skills assessments may still include these components. So please um, note that. So here's an example where the review for CIDR and VLSM is being removed from the curriculum. That doesn't mean we've removed CIDR and VLSM, just the review portion that was in the second course. Also looking at the reduction or um, removal of summary and floating static routes and then configuring the RIP NG protocol. Now we say reduced emphasis because these protocols and concepts might be talked about in other areas of the curriculum. So we don't wanna say that they're completely removed, 
but they're areas that uh, in most cases have been taken out. Also, there's information from the support desk about additional help, then information around the certification, and then it goes into the instructor PowerPoint components. So here's the main four components for the module two for routing and switching essentials. And then it goes into breaking out the PowerPoints for you. So many of you like to use these in the classroom and they're available for all four of the modules. The additional resources that I showed on the slide are available basically from the course page. So we've reorganized a number of our resources. So if you go to resources, on the netacad.com homepage. Under instructor resources, you'll see two new links, course resources and assessment resources. So you'll be able to go into course resources and then click on the bridging course material. At the time of this video, it wasn't live, but I do have a draft version of it. So here within this draft version of the bridging course page, a couple things to point out to you. So basically here are the instructor planning guides and PowerPoints for the four different modules. Also down here under instructor training, you'll find the link to, of course, this video, as well as the import video, and a link to enroll in the global IPD week course. So even if you're listening to this video after the global IPD week, which is basically the first week of June, uh, the content out there is very important because we're centering it around the new bridging course content. The other thing you'll see here are the lab resources. So we have different lab resources for your course, basically the student and instructor lab manuals. Let's take a look at the bridging course. On netacad.com, I can go to create a course. I can select the academy where I want to create the bridging course. Many of you might have more than one academy. And in the drop down here, I can select CCNA routing and switching 6.0 bridging. Now, I already have a course created, so I'm gonna cancel out of this. Basically, all CCNA instructors will have access to the bridging course. So here's the course that I have created. From the home page, I can click here to get started. And this basically starts with information around the bridging course. So this first introductory page talks about the new content that we listed on the slide. It also gives you a little more information around whether it's a page or a topic or a section. So if you want to go back and look at that graphical representation at any time that I showed you, it's embedded within the course template and you can take a look at it here. From here, I'm gonna click on modules. And let's take a look at how the course is laid out. So basically we said there's four main modules within the course, here they are. So one for each of the current CCNA courses. If we expand the introduction to networks, we'll see that there's some overview information about what's covered in this module. Also, you can see the breakdown then, the first page of content would be 1.1.1.1. So let's click on that. So this is what I was saying that the course content was within the course itself. So it's basically written in wiki pages. So here's basically the first page. This is around extended trace route. If I click on next to flow through the modules, here's a packet tracer about testing connectivity with trace route. The additional component here then is you'll find a number of quizlets. So we've started doing more and more quizlets throughout the new curriculum as we build it. And a Quizlet is a great way to kind of check your understanding, um, see how much you know, where you might need to go back and take a look for more information. And there's basically uh, five or six different modes here. It looks like six different modes you can run this in for practice. So let's go back to the modules list. So from here, if I scroll down, I'll see a number of different Quizlets. So there's troubleshooting. Uh, as I go down here, there's another Quizlet on troubleshooting. And then I said there is a overview quiz for each of the modules. So here you see the introduction to network bridge quiz, which covers the content that's in this module. You'll also notice if we look at the connecting networks course, you'll see content quizzes. So there's three content quizzes in here. So there's a fair number of content added into connecting networks. And so we wanted to look at providing some quizzes on specific content or topics. 
So here's an example of connecting networks. This is a quiz on BGP. Remember, these are on by default, basically published by default, and they do not show up in the gradebook. So thank you very much for listening to the video. I would recommend that you go out and take a look at the import video to see how to import the content of the bridging course into an existing 5.x course. And best of luck to you in the classroom. Thank you.